1 Corinthians uh, chapter number 16 and verse number 13 and 14. And Paul is writing to the Corinthians and he's instructing them and he's preparing them and he's, he's letting them know like this is what's going to be happening. This is what you need to expect. And it says in verse number 13, he tells them, be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the faith. Stand firm. Now, if it was going to be easy, if having faith was easy, would he tell them to stand firm? No. If it was going to be a cakewalk, having faith, would he tell them to stand firm? No. It would be simple. He wouldn't have to tell them to stand firm. But he tells them to stand firm because he knows that your faith is going to be challenged. And it is not always going to be easy. And it is not always going to be fun. And you're not always going to understand everything that is going on. So he says you need to make a decision that you are going to stand firm in your faith. That you're going to stand firm because it's not easy. And if you don't stand firm, then it could easily be taken away. So then it continues on and says, stand firm in the faith. Be courageous and be strong. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And watch this. He says, this is a little, this is a little caveat too, by the way. This is a little caveat that we don't talk about a lot. Whenever we talk about faith, whenever we talk about great things, this is a little part that we don't really talk about. In, in verse number 14, it says, do everything. Somebody say everything. everything. Do everything in love. See, Paul said, listen, faith is not easy. Faith is not easy. He's like, faith is difficult. Faith is not just about throwing up a prayer and just hoping that everything works out. Because that's what we do a lot of times. Like, I got faith. I just threw up a prayer. I said a quick prayer. Now it's just going to have to work itself out. Faith is not about just throwing up a prayer and hoping that it works itself out. Faith takes work. It takes work. It takes us being willing to make the decision, I'm going to stand firm. I'm going to stand firm when it works and when it doesn't. When it's easy and when it's hard, I'm going to stand firm in the midst of every circumstance. And if we're not careful, what happens so often after a series like this where we've heard for five weeks straight about faith and talked about faith, what can happen after a series like this is we can begin to think that it's easy. Well, I've listened to the messages. I've taken the notes. So now having faith is going to be easy. And then another thing that we'll do after a series like this is we kind of begin to walk this line. We kind of tiptoe this line of is it faith or is it foolishness? And it's, it's a line. I mean, there is a line. I'll be honest with you. There is a line. And it's like we're so fired up after a series like this, and rightfully so, and that's good. But we begin to think, we, we begin to think, is this faith or is this foolishness? Am I truly having faith or am I acting in fully, foolishness? Where we're so fired up that we begin to do things that we think is faith that God never instructed us to do. We begin to do things that we think is faith that God never led us to do. God never told us to do it. But because we're so fired up on faith, we begin to take our own ideas and we begin to say, I have faith for this when it was never God's idea to begin with. And so what happens in those moments is then when it doesn't come to pass because it wasn't what God had for your life, the enemy is able to creep in and begin to tell you, see, this is why you shouldn't ever have faith for anything at all. Because we, we get on this line where we're so fired up knowing that God can do what he said he would do that we begin to think that just because we want it means that God's going to do it. And, and we tiptoe this line of faith or foolishness, and we think we're doing things in faith, but really we're doing things in foolishness, and we say all of this in the name of avoiding fear. Well, I'm just avoiding fear, right? I'm just, I'm not afraid. I believe that it can happen. Now it's all gonna happen. But is it lining up with what God said? Is your faith lining up with what 
God said. Because faith is not just something, again, of just God being a genie. Faith is saying, God, you've spoken this word. I believe you're going to do it, and I'm going to see it come to pass. Faith is not telling God, this is everything you need to do in my life or else my life is a mess. Faith is saying, God, what is it that needs to happen in my life? And then once he tells you, you say, God, I'm going to believe and I'm going to trust and I'm going to follow your leading. And the last year and a half has, has given us a lot of reasons to fear. I, I, I don't think, I think it's naive to try to get up and try to say, oh, there's no reason to be afraid. The last year and a half has given a lot of reasons to have fear. It's brought uncertainty. It's brought confusion. It's brought circumstances, unusual circumstances, something that none of us have ever experienced. It brought all kinds of different things. And what we've seen is that people would try to say, well, if you're operating in faith, then you'll do this. Or they'll say, if you're operating in wisdom, then you'll do this. But as followers of Jesus, we have to understand they are not mutually exclusive of each other. It's not faith or wisdom, but they work together. And so as we close out this series, Brave, I want to talk to you on the subject, finding balance. Finding balance. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for today, and I just thank you again that we have this opportunity to be here, to hear from you. Lord, I pray that you would speak to our lives, help us to see and to hear from you, not to see and to hear from me. Pray that you would do what only you can do, and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, those of you who are married, do you remember uh, when you knew that the person you were with, you wanted to be with for the rest of your life? Like, you, you knew that you wanted to be with that person. Some of us, like, you know, some people are like, oh, God told me as soon as I saw them. It's like, creeper. But, you know, th there is a time where, where you, like, you just know, like, something in you clicks, and it's like, ah, oh, man, I, like, I feel like this is somebody I want to be with for the rest of my life. Whether you believe in the one or not, we have a time where it's like, this is somebody I want to be with. Like, I can, I, <laughs> we can both survive this for 50 years, you know? Like, I'm not going to go crazy, and they're not going to go crazy. Like, we, we can manage. So, uh, there, there's, there's moments, and I know for me, I had that moment with Nicole, and I remember it very vividly, like just so well. But I will admit, it happened pretty early on. And because it happened early on, I kept it to myself. Because I'm not trying to look crazy. I'm not trying to ruin this, you know. So I'm like, listen, I'm just going to keep it to myself. Because even though I knew I wanted to be with her for forever, what if she didn't want to be with me forever yet? And then because I said something, it, it, you know, she'd be like freaked out and then move on to somebody else that was lesser than me. So I'm just saying, like, I was like, listen, I got to keep this to myself, right? I had to play the game. And I know everybody's like, the game's so stupid. I agree. Then stop playing it because everybody plays the game. And I, I think I'm a nice guy. So I've, I've always heard nice guys always lose, right? Nice guys always lose. Nice guys finish last. So I was like, I'm not going to mess this up. So I kept it to myself. I told my friend who had introduced us to each other how I felt. But I was like, I'm keeping this to myself. I'm like, I'm not telling Nicole how I feel. I'm not even going to tell her I love her until she tells me first. I know some of y'all are like, before you judge me, you need to understand I had a good reason for it. Because my amazing wife and the just fantastic mother to our children was guarded. That's what she called it. She, she was guarded. She, she literally told me one day, she was like, I'm just very guarded, right? So, so I'm the emotional one in the relationship, if you can't tell, still to this day, right? Like, I, I'm, I'm the emotional one. She's just, she's, always, she's very stoic. Right? She's very reserved. She thinks before she speaks. She has the good traits. She, she, she analyzes things, and she'll just, she, she just, she's very rooted. And she was that way in this moment. Like, so she was guarded. I understand why she was guarded, because she had never dated me yet. And if all you've ever dated is like a one to three, right, you don't know how to open your heart up to a ten. So, of course, you're going to be guarded. You're going to be skeptical. Like, there's no way this dude is for real, right? Like, this is too good to be true. So she had to be guarded, and I get it and understand it. But I was like, I'm just, I can't tell her how I feel. 
because I can't ruin all of this. I wear my emotions on my sleeves. I say what I'm thinking. But because she was guarded, I pretended to be guarded. So I kept my cards closed too. And so I was pretending to be guarded. The problem is I was pretending. And when you're pretending to be somebody or to do something, eventually the real you is going to come out. And so we were at dinner one night. I think we had been dating for like a couple weeks, month, month and a half. I don't, maybe, probably about a month. We've been dating for about a month. And we're sitting at dinner. It's like the worst restaurant ever. They had no meat. It was all just like, I don't even know what it was, like salads and things. So we're sitting there. We're eating this meal. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, play it cool, Dustin. Because I knew I wanted her to meet my mom. Because I learned, like, I've learned the hard way in life, as we all have, like, moms know, right? So I'm like, okay, I think this girl's legit. I think she's the real deal, but I need her to meet mom. But I'm like, I can't tell her that. We've only been together for, like, a month. So we're sitting at dinner, and I'm playing it cool. Like, yeah, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, you know, it's cool. (laughs) And then all of a sudden, without thinking, it just blurts out. You want to meet my mom? Out of nowhere. There was no lead in. There was no hey. So like thing. it was just taking a bite of food. So you want to meet my mom? And she, like her response haunts me to this day. Like we're married. We got two kids. Been married for five years. It haunts me to this day because she looks at me with these big eyes like this. And she goes, whoa, big step. I am not lying, exaggerate. Am I lying? No. Whoa, big step. And then she goes back down to eating. Doesn't say anything. So I'm just there like, oh, oh yeah, no, I, I didn't mean now. I mean like, you know, like in five months or something, like six months, like when you're ready. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, I, I did. And then she's like, she, she, she processed it. She's like, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'll meet her. You know, I'll meet her. And so then... She met my mom, obviously, everything. The rest is history. It's great. But I will tell you that she told me she loved me first. And she told me on the day she met my mom before she met my mom. So your boy broke through the wall. (laughs) Right? She might have been guarded, but favor ain't fair. And I got God on my side. But she, she told me when we were early on dating, like the first week or so, she was like, I'm just very guarded. So I'm very guarded. And as frustrating as that was for me, because I'm just like, no, I'm an emotional person. I need you to be emotional too. As frustrating as it was for me, truthfully, it was a good thing that she was guarded. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to be guarded. But the same is true in our life of faith. So often we think that we're not to be guarded because we have faith. We think because if I have faith, then I'm just out there. I'm just, everything's fine. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not blocking anything. I'm not, I'm not guarded. I'm just living life. I'm just doing everything. But the reality is when it comes to our faith, the first thing I need you to write down is you need to be guarded. You need to be guarded. With your faith, you need to be guarded. Well, isn't faith just like kind of go with the flow? Isn't it just like it is what it is? Isn't it just like I'm just floating through life, right? Because I got faith. No, No, you need to be guarded. Paul told us in 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 13, he said, be on your guard. He said, be on your guard. In other words, have faith, but be guarded. Trust God, but be guarded. Take the steps, but be guarded. He said, be on your guard. Because having faith does not mean being foolish. Say that again. Having faith does not mean being foolish. Having faith means I'm going to take the steps that God is telling me to take. I'm going to follow his leading, but I am going to guard myself against the lies and the temptations and the traps and the schemes of the enemy. I'm going to obey what God said. I'm going to take the steps of faith, but I'm going to guard against those things. Just because we're guarded, it doesn't mean that you, doesn't, that you don't have faith. And just because we have faith, it does not mean that we're not supposed to be guarded. Listen, naivety 
and turning a blind eye and willful ignorance does not make you more holy. It makes you more exposed, but it doesn't make you more holy. Oh no, I'm just, I'm trusting God, you know, and it's just, it is what it is. And, and I'm just, I'm just going with the flow and I, I'm just, I'm not worried about anything and I'm just trusting him because ignorance is bliss. Heard this? Ignorance is bliss. No, ignorance is destructive. It's destructive. And if we leave this series feeling like, oh, I got faith, let me go out and be stupid and ignorant and not check with God before I do something just because I'm doing it in faith. That's why I'm trying to help you understand. Faith is not just doing what you think you're supposed to be doing. Faith is doing what God has told you to be doing. That's how you know that when I go out and do it, God's going to be there the whole time. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. But if you're going to see what God has for your life, it's not about going out and doing what you think is best. It's about going out and fulfilling what God said was best. Ignorance is not bliss. It's destructive. God never wants never once called us to a life of ignorance. Never once in the Bible does it say, be ignorant. Never once in the Bible does it say, if you have faith, you will just go and say ignorance is bliss. It never once says that God tells us to be ignorant. You know what God told us to do though? He told us to use wisdom. He told us to use wisdom. That's why in Proverbs 4 and verse 7, it says wisdom is the principal thing. It's the principal thing. He said, Solomon told us, he said, therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. Having faith is combined with using wisdom because wisdom will help you see things for what they truly are. It looks good, but it's bad. It, it looks like faith, but it doesn't line up with the word of God, so therefore it's not faith. Wisdom, understanding, helps you see when the enemy tries to slide something in there that's not for you, that's not something you should be doing, that is meant to deter your faith to something else down a rabbit trail when it really should be focused on something God has for you, the enemy will slide something in and he'll be like, oh, if you had faith, you would do this. He told Jesus, why don't you jump off the mountain? He said, if, if you're the son of man, why don't you jump off? Why don't you use the faith that you have to do something that doesn't go with the word? And Jesus hit the devil with the word that he knew from retaining and his wisdom and his knowledge and his understanding. So when our lives, our calling, our purpose, and God's plan for us is too great for us not to be guarded with wisdom. For us not to be willing to say, is this, is this what God's word says or is this what I'm saying? Is it what God's word says or is it what somebody else is saying? Now, having wisdom does not mean that we do away with faith and that we cower in fear. Wisdom is meant to strengthen our faith. Wisdom is meant to help us fully understand what it is that God is trying to get us to do, where he is trying to lead us, what he is trying to say to us. Because God calls us to have wisdom because he knew that the devil would be busy. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna stand up here and I'm not gonna try to tell you that everything bad that happens in your life is the devil. I know a lot of times we do that. It's like, oh, that's the devil. That's the devil. Me wearing this shirt today, it's the devil. No, it was just me having pride before the game, right? I learned my lesson. We always, it's like, oh, it's the devil. It's the devil. It's, it's not always the devil. But the devil is busy. So while it's not always him, he is still busy. 1 Peter 5, 8, it said, be alert. See, I like to hit y'all with the word because if I just stand up here and say things, how do you know it's actually true? You should never just take my word for it. You should never take somebody else's word for it. We need to look in the word because the Bible and the word is what backs up everything that should be said from a platform. All right. First Peter 5, 8, it says, be alert. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion, lion looking for someone to devour. Matthew 10, 16, Jesus says, in case you need to hear Jesus say it, he says, I am sending you out among wolves. 
Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes. I am sending you out among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes. So if we just float through life, like it is what it is, and we never use wisdom, then we will fall for the enemy's trap every time. We will fall for his scheme every time. If we just kind of just float through life, just going around, just saying, okay, it is what it is, and, and, and it's not what it's not, and I'm just kind of going to live life, we will fall for his trap every time. Because some of us will end up using faith as an excuse to be lazy. Well, I got faith, so I don't need to pray for that thing. I've got faith, so I don't need to read the word. I, I, I've got faith, so I don't need to seek the Lord. I've got faith, so I don't need to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. We use faith as an excuse to be lazy, as an excuse not to pray about it. Well, if I pray about it, then I don't have faith. No, you have faith and you're taking steps, but you're still seeking God's leading and his guidance. We don't want to be lazy. We need to, we need to be constantly trying to go and find wisdom, trying to find wisdom to guard ourselves with, trying to seek God's word, trying to see what God has for us, trying to see what he wants to say to us, not being willing to be lazy and just count it off as faith, but to be willing to say, I've got faith and I'm going to continue to seek God as he gives me step after step after step, which will ultimately, if we're lazy with it, it will ultimately lead us to give in to fear when we are called to stand firm in faith. If we, if we get lazy with it and we let it slide, then we'll give in to the fear that the enemy brings into our lives. When God said, I want you to stand firm in faith. And that's the next thing I want you to see. We're guarded, but we're firm. Verse number 13, it said, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the faith. Whenever we let our guard down, we may stand in faith for a moment, we may stand in faith when it's comfortable, when it's convenient, when it's costing us nothing, but ultimately we will give in to the fear. And our faith is to be firm. Our faith is not to be wishy-washy. Our faith is to be firm and steadfast and consistent. Notice I said our faith, not our feelings. Because the reality is feelings come and go. Feelings will always be fluctuating. Your feelings will always fluctuate. And if you remove the guard of wisdom, of being able to check what you're feeling with what God actually said, then you'll go down the wrong path. That's how you know the difference between faith and feelings. Is it what God said or is it what I feel like I want? So our faith is different than our feelings. Your feelings, till the day you leave this earth, are going to fluctuate. They're going to go up and they're going to go down. They're going to go up, and they're going to go down. They're going to be happy. They're going to be sad. It's, it's going to fluctuate. No matter what you do, it's always going to have times, seasons, moments where our feelings fluctuate. It is part of being human that our feelings just fluctuate, especially if you're an emotional person like me. Your feelings can be all over the place. Like you can be happy, sad, mad, and then glad again all in like a five-minute period, right? Like it, just, it fluctuates based on things. But our faith is to be firm. It's to be firm. And understand this, when you feel like giving up, when you feel like quitting, when you feel like stopping short, that's normal. It is normal to feel like quitting. It is normal to feel like it's a lost cause. It is normal to feel like giving up, like stopping short. All those things are normal. It is normal to feel all of those things, to feel like it, there's no point to feel like you might as well just quit now, to feel like you may stop. And I know that, that people will try to tell you that they never have those feelings because their faith is so great, but the reality is they're lying to you. If somebody tells you they never felt like quitting and they've never felt like it was over and they've never felt like their best days were behind them and they've never felt like they didn't know enough to do it, if anybody tells you they've never felt like they couldn't do it, they've lied to you. They've lied to you because the reality is our feelings fluctuate. Our feelings come and go. Our feelings go up and, our go and they go down. And our feelings will always, always be a roller coaster. Always. 
That's why we can't follow them because it'll always be a roller coaster. That doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that God's mad at you. It doesn't mean that you're going to hell. It just means that you are human. Our feelings always fluctuate, which is why the Bible tells us to stand firm in our faith. Because no matter what our feelings do, it's not going to dictate what I believe. No matter what my feelings may feel like, it's not going to dictate the decisions that I make. Because I'm not living by my feelings, I'm living by my faith. I'm living firm in my faith. I'm standing still in my faith. And I know that, like, this is why we have to be guarded with wisdom. Because wisdom will let you know the opposite of what your feelings let you know. Your feelings will try to tell you that it's over. But your wisdom will let you know that God's word said it's still coming to pass. Your feelings will tell you a lie. But God's word will tell you the truth. And that's why I won't be shaken. I won't be knocked down. I won't be deterred from what God has for me. I'm not, I'm not moving backwards, but I'm moving forward in faith. I'm standing firm where I am, and the only place I'm going is forward. You can't take me backward. I know I may feel like I'm going backwards. I, may, I know I may feel like it's over, but you can't take me back to where I was because I'm not living in my feelings, but I'm trusting in my faith. I'm not going to listen to the lie of the enemy that tries to take me back there, but I'm going to step forward. And because I'm on guard and because I'm standing firm in my faith, then I'm able to be courageous in my faith. And that's the last thing I want you to write down in this series, is we're to be courageous. We're to be courageous. We, we stand firm and we're courageous. It said in verse 13, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous and be strong. Be courageous and be strong. Be courageous, be bold, be strong, be brave. And this is where the balance comes into play. This is where we have to find balance. Finding the balance between being wise and being brave. The balance between moving with wisdom and moving in faith. And for whatever reason, in the church today, we have separated the two. We have separated them. We've said, listen, if you move in wisdom, then you don't have faith. And we've said, if you move by faith, then you're not using wisdom. But it is not one or the other. It is not wisdom or faith. It is faith and wisdom. If you're moving in wisdom, then you're living by faith. And if you are living by faith, then you are moving in wisdom because the two are connected. The two work together. God did not just give us blind faith in some areas, yes, but he also gave us wisdom to be able to discern what is him and what is not. So while I may not know the outcome, while I may not know the next step I need to take, I at least can discern the attack of the enemy that's trying to lead me in the opposite direction. So while I'm going to trust in God, while I'm going to have faith in what he said, I'm also going to use the wisdom that he gave me in his word to make the decisions that I make. It's not one or the other, it's both of them working together. That's how we are courageous. And you can truly tell. Y'all ain't ready for this. You can truly tell if you are courageous and unafraid in the most bizarre way that you would ever think of. Like, seriously, reading this this week, I was like, this does, like, really? Like, really? like this is it? This is how we're closing the series? You can tell that you truly are living by faith in a way that most of us would, like, never even think. And it's found in verse number 14. And it's in the way that we love. Isn't that bizarre? You can tell that you are truly courageous and that you are truly having faith and being brave in the way that you love. Because verse 13, it said, be, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. But verse 14, it says, do everything in love. You can tell somebody is truly brave, not by how strong they try to make you feel they are, 
Not by how rough they are. Not by, like that's, that's what I would think. Somebody's brave because they're willing to just do it. No, you can tell somebody has a God kind of faith, a God kind of braveness by the way that they love. 1 John 4, 18, last verse I'll read you and then we'll close out the series. It said, there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love. Perfect love drives out fear. I'm brave, not because of how strong I am. I'm brave because I understand the love that God has for me. And not only do I understand it for myself, but I understand that the love he has for me is to be a conduit he works through to give it to others. And I went back and forth on this, on, on closing out this series this way. I did. I was like, man, you know, it just seems so, so out there. Like, we can tell that we're brave by our love. And then on the way to church this morning, we were in the car, and our two sons, Judah and Elijah, were in the back. And they were in a fantastic mood today because God is good. God said, if he's got to wear the Georgia shirt, I'm putting the kids in a good mood. We're on our way to church. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Judah just looks over at Elijah. And he said, I love it when Elijah's in my class. Talking about here at church. I love it when Elijah's in my class. He said, because Elijah makes me brave. He said, and I just love him. Totally unprovoked this morning. He said, I love being in his class because Elijah makes me brave and I just love him. Elijah is two years younger than Judah. But Judah's finding bravery in his little brother because of the love that they have for each other. See, you don't have to be the perfect person. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have served Jesus for 30 years in order to be able to have an impact on the life of somebody else who's struggling with their faith. You don't have to have all of the accolades and all these things. Elijah's two years younger than Judah. And Judah said, this little dude makes me brave because I love him. This is why God said perfect love drives out fear. Because of the love that I have for you and because of the love that you as my children have for each other, there is no fear amongst you. But there is only faith. We are brave, not just by ourselves, but we are brave together because we understand that it's not just up to me to figure it out, but God has given me people on this earth in a community that I can go through life together. That's how I'm brave. I don't find my bravery because there's somebody who's not where I am in life and I'm able to just beat them down. I find my bravery in understanding you need me and I need you. We need each other. We're braver together. Our faith is stronger together because the reality is God may have revealed some things to you and you may have some wisdom in some areas that I don't have wisdom in. And you can be there to help guide my faith and help me understand that while I think that this may be where I need to go, you can help take me to the word and show me something. And vice versa, there may be something in my life that I've been through that I can help you in. Because it's not about just trying to feel like we can do it all on our own. That's not what faith is. Faith is not about me against the world. It's not about I'm just going to take it all myself. Faith is about understanding that it is us and God and his children. Together. Together. Because ultimately, everything that God is doing in our individual lives has a kingdom purpose. 
Everything that God moves in our lives has a kingdom purpose. And the step that I take may not impact me, but it may impact somebody else. But it's not about me and it's not about you. It's about the kingdom. And so God says, I want you to work together in love that you understand that the perfect love together can drive out any fear. The perfect love together can help somebody who comes in feeling scared to death to go back to work tomorrow because they don't know what's standing for them. But they can come in and feel the love of Jesus in this place from somebody else. And it'll drive out the fear. I'm brave enough, not on my own self, but because of God's truth in my life and the people that he's placed in my life. And I'm able to know that that I don't have to have it all figured out. I don't have to know all the answers. I don't have to have all the solutions because God can give me somebody in my life that loves me enough to help lead me and to help guide me. And I think there's two tragic things that happen in the church. One of them is when somebody is seeking help or needs help, and instead of receiving love and the help they need, they receive judgment. But I think the second thing that is tragic is where we begin to feel like we know it all and we don't need anybody else. And when somebody lovingly gives us help and somebody lovingly wants to help us figure out what God is doing in our lives, we reject them because we don't think we need them. My bravery is not found in myself. My bravery is found in the word that God has given me in the wisdom and in the community and the people that he's placed in my life. I'm not trying to just figure it all out by myself. I'm not just trying to handle it all by myself, but I'm saying, God, lead me through your people, through your word, and through your voice of the Holy Spirit. I have no reason to be afraid, no reason to to run in fear, but I can know that God is with me every step of the way.